is the GTN Show. Welcome. And you might have noticed I've swapped Mark this week. We've got Susie. Thanks for joining us, Susie. Thanks for having me. Susie Cheatham is an Ironman champion and two top six finishes at Kona, including this year. Well, yeah. and now you're sort of getting back into things. You've had a bit of a break and looking ahead at next season. And I wanted to chat to you a little bit about how one goes about winning an Ironman. Because I'd love to. It's a bit of a long process, really. Um, took me quite a while. Lots of hard work. Yeah. Lots of training. Um, there's not really any secrets. It's just a whole okay. lot of hard work and... Oh. Yeah, sorry. There's no secret recipe. Yeah, no, just... the reality is there's lots of hard work and... That's a shame. Yeah. <laughs> um, but on a serious note, like, how do you now... You've come back from your off-season, you've had a nice break that we were chatting about earlier, and... You're looking at next year with, you know, Kona for you being an Ironman athlete is your focus. Yeah. How do you break down your season? Um, so for me, I mean, it's, yeah, it's all about Kona. So how can I physically get, not just physically, physically and mentally get to Kona in the best possible shape? And um, for me, I, I, I don't want to race too much before. Some people find that racing quite close to Kona is the way to get them there in the best shape. Um, for me, I try to do a, quite an early season Ironman, probably around April. Um, on top of that, I try, I try to race the championship races, so that sort of leaves Ironman South Africa and Ironman Texas. Um, so I think it's looking like I'll be doing either one or the other of those. And are you going to do any 70.3s like in the build-up or are you literally saving yourself just for the, the big races? Um, well, for me, I, I prefer Ironman racing. Um, mm. I think I'm better at it. 70.3 um, racing is just like you're redlining it the whole way and it's, it's I find it so much tougher. You can't say this because we had a, um, Mark and I had a conversation about this and Mark was saying that he thinks 70.3 is harder than Ironman but I was saying just because I've done Ironman he hasn't that oh, okay. so we, can't, well, we can't let to Mark be honest, this. I'm, I'm with Mark on that one. I think 70.3 <laughs> racing is a really hard yeah, format because you're, you're not, you're not that much slower than you would be in, yeah. in, in there's no Olympic there's systems. no let up is there yeah you're just you're just going not the whole way up and, in Ironman, yeah it's, it's a different it's intensity a more, Ironman is a more controlled effort mm. um 70.3 is um for me maybe less controlled and yeah you know it's 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 hard the whole way you're hurting from the beginning whereas Ironman you have to control it a little bit more so you're not hurting straight away yeah and are you can do anything different next year you've had you've been really consistent with two top six finishes mm. at Kona which is amazing um is there anything you you feel that you're going to do like dr drastically different or you're just going to keep kind of working away at the things you've been mm. working on so i think um you know we're in that we're in that phase of the season at the moment where we're sort of we're analyzing what sort of went well and what went what went potentially wrong in kona and what went well in the build-up and what went well in my mm. training um and i think um yeah, I mean, there's a few little tweaks we'll make. I think my swim probably let me down this year. Um, so I've gone sort of right back to basics yeah. um, with my swim, which is possibly the most frustrating and the hardest thing. Swimming is unique in triathlon. You know, it's not it's not like biking you can learn and you can go through yeah. the process of of working hard, as, as I think running yeah. is as well. Um, swimming's, it doesn't necessarily, if you're, if you're, swimming's not my natural, you're not the sport you came from. Discipline, yeah. yeah, and it's, um, it's, it's, it's hard because it's not necessarily, you can't just work harder and you'll go faster. Yeah. So that's, that's where I am at the moment in terms of improving next year. That's, that's what I really need to But I reckon on. a lot of people watching this will be like, ah, oh, you yeah, know, they're with you on that page with the swimming just being, you know, you've got to go in and think about it. Mm. But once you've done that you'll you know, next year you, you could see massive improvements couldn't you well i hope so i hope so <laughs> cool well i'm sorry to break it to you it sounds like there is no magic recipe but um just lots of hard work mm. thanks susie And moving on to the weekly poll. Last week we asked you how long you think the draft distance should be. And the results are in. At 7% it was other. 10 metres came in at 15%. And then 12 metres, 18% of you voted for. But it was an out and out winner for 20 metres. 58% of people went for that distance. And it opened up quite a big debate actually. And we've had some comments in. I'm going to share a few with you. Haria Popan um, said, hard to enforce it when you have 
2,400 partic participants, but I think it should be enforced at least for the pros, likes of you, Susie. What's, uh, what else have we got here? Yeah, so we've got James um, that says, I race with a 10 meter draft distance, and that's hard enough to get past someone. So any more than um, 20 would be too much. That's interesting, bit of a contrast there. Then Matasik17 says, I, I, um, I would say I don't have a set distance for drafting because it makes the run much more exciting. Almost all sprint finishes come from triathletes bunched in the cycling part of the race. A bit of a, a different type of racing probably, but um, we've got one other we've chosen as well. Yeah, so Martin comes, comes back with um, sort of the numbers thing and says, when there is 20 to 50 pros, then yes, increase it. Um, but to move it into age group races where there's regularly up to 4,000 athletes, on the course is just not enough room to yeah. to make that draft zone so big. I think that's the kind of consensus we had so many comments about it. But just quickly putting you on the spot, Susie, what what where'd your vote go? Oh definitely I'm with the majority I'd say I'd say the twenty meters. Um just makes it the fairest race. It's the yeah. it gives the best reflection of of true swim bike run. Yeah. Well we'll see what happens but I think the debate will just go on forever. But we need to move on and this week we wanted to ask you what do you choose to use for your refuel as soon as you finish a long ride and we've got five options for you. So we've got um, first up the recovery shake, pretty standard. Um, then we've got Heather's favourite cake. <laughs> she wasn't supposed to say that. <laughs> um, and then we've got beer, sandwich or or something else. What's, what do you go for? You've just dropped me in it that I go for cake, so <laughs> yeah. yours. Well, do you know what? It depends on the time of year. And um, I'd like to say I'm always professional and always have a recovery shake with my protein and my carbs. But I think post my biggest session for Kona, I am... Um, I came back and had a cheeky glass of wine because I was so proud of myself like for finishing <laughs> finishing the training block. So I love that. And it's probably I mean, not the most pro, but um, I wasn't but, sure if you were going to admit that or if I could mention <laughs> it. But very very honest of you. Although I think maybe you know, some of our viewers now are going to go home and think, "Oh, I finished my my turbo session on for the glass of wine." Yeah, yeah. When they don't yeah. make it to their next race, I'll blame you, Susie. Yeah, you can blame me. <laughs> but anyway, um, back to the point. That was recovery shake cake beer, sandwich or other. And if it is something other, then do let us know what you like to have at the end of a ride and leave that in the comments section below. And to vote on it, just click on the poll above my head. It's time for GTN Tribe and we launched this last week. We've got two clubs up on our map already and we've had loads of you sending in pics, videos, all sorts from your clubs. And this week, we've got a new one to add to our map. So this week is my tri club in Dubai, um, made up of club members from eight different nationalities. And it looks like there's a real range of athlete age as well. We've seen transition practice happening, which might seem to us a little bit of a strange time of year, but not everyone's in their off season now. And it is Ironman 70.3 in Dubai in just nine weeks time. So I guess those guys will be focusing a bit more, unlike us who just sort of coming back from our off season. But whilst we're on GTN Tribe, and I've got you here, Susie, did you come from any club background or have you trained with a club? I know you don't now so per se, but... Yeah, so I mean, even now I I'm, I train with the team bath set up yeah. um, up at the university. Um, but getting into triathlon, the club set up was really important to me. I lived in Cambridge and I worked standard hours, so it was good for me to have the structure of, yeah. a, of a club to go training with. Um, really important for my swimming, because that was new to me. Yeah. You know, it was sort of the structure of swimming early, on a Tuesday and Thursday, and that would get a really good quality swim twice a weekend for me. Um, and it was just having that support when I didn't really know what I was doing. And I think know, that's I, so much what comes yeah. to that, isn't it? It's a support network, and that's what so many of the people yeah. sending things in. It's about the community of being yeah. in a in a club. And mm. but yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting to. I'm sure some people think are oh, pros who have never been in a club or just do everything on their own. But you still need mm. that bit of community feel. Yeah, that, I mean, everyone helps. everyone has to start somewhere. I started triathlon fairly late, relatively yeah. to some athletes, and, you know, the club setup really helped me. Well, we're pretty nosy here, so we'd love to know what happens in your club. Any photos, any videos you've got, please send them in on Facebook or on Twitter using the hashtag GTN Tribe. 
race news and it was absolutely jam-packed with racing over the weekend. We're going to start down in Australia with the Asia Pacific Championship. And it was a pretty strong field. The women's results, it was Melissa Healthchild who won with a 4.07. Felicity Sheedy Ryan from Australia second, so a 1-2 for Australia. And then New Zealand, Amelia Watkinson was third. Um, and on the men's side, it was um, a, a nice close of, of his career. Dan Wilson won from Australia and it was his final ever race, which is a pretty nice way to go out. Second, it was Tim Reid, also from Australia, and then New Zealand third again for Braden Curry. So a similar pattern, very much um, Australia dominating in that race. And I think it was um, a pretty close finish for Tim Reid and Braden Curry. Yeah, yeah I, saw, um, I saw there was a bit of a, a sprint finish and yeah, it looked pretty painful. <laughs> Going back to your 70.3, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A tough a tough race and a strong field at, um, at that. And we had another championship. It was the Middle East Championships as well in Bahrain. And this one had potentially a massive prize purse up for grabs. So we'll go through the results first and then talk a little bit about that. So on the women's side, it was the win for Holly Lawrence after a slightly sort of maybe would you do you think it's fair to say disappointing season for her? As oh I think um I think her year will have been all about the 70.3 world yeah. champs and you know she didn't she didn't perform at the 70.3 world champs and I think that will have that will have really knocked knocked yeah. her. Um and it's good to see her come back, yeah. um get over that and you know yeah. Pretty much, you know. I mean, it had been going so well until that, and mm. then she had that injury, I think, you know, a bit before. And yeah, yeah. So, yeah, to, to, to mentally come back from that as much as physically yeah. is really tough. And, yeah, it's good to see another, someone able to do that. Another confidence booster for mm. an athlete at the end of the season. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, great result. Holly Lawrence from Great Britain was first, and it was Anne Haug of Germany with... Um, a tremendous run in second, and Daniela Reef in third. I know you you mentioned that Anne Hag's run, and you. I think looking at the time, she ran one seventeen, which is the same time as Terenzo Bazzoni. Yeah, I mean it's uh, it's really impressive um, running a one seventeen when the other girls that are good runners. I yeah. mean Holly and Holly and Daniela yeah. are both fantastic runners, and they they ran a, a one a one twenty three and a one twenty eight, and you know Puts that probably shows it's a pretty legit course. Yeah. and you know, you've got Anna Haug running the same sort of splits as the guys. Yeah. I mean, that's that's, that's really impressive, and I'm sure we'll see a lot more of her in the next sort of yeah. season. Well, it was tough racing on the men's side as well. We saw a debut impressive performance by Christian Blumenfeld from Norway, winning his first ever 70.3 race in a tough field. Terenzo Bazzoni was second, and then Sven Rieder of Switzerland was third. But just off the podium, Javier Gomez fourth, and then Matt Troutman in fifth. It was a really packed field, and it's the first time we've seen Matt Troutman back from injury. Yeah, so Matt had a big crash in January, the end of January last year, and I think there was it was questioning whether whether okay. he'd be able to walk again, let oh. alone race again. You know, having three of his vertebrae fused, it was Gosh. a bit a little bit touching. So how he can get into the aero position after that as mm. well, it's impressive. Yeah, and to get back to to really competitive field and and to come fifth and run a one fifteen one sixteen, you know, it's re really impressive. And finally, it was a full distance Ironman in Cozumel, Mexico. What happened in the women's race, Susie? So we had um, Lisa Roberts um, winning the women's. I think she's come back from a tough season after being injured at the beginning, and she won that with a sub three marathon, which is quite impressive. Wow, yeah. Then we had in second place Kirsty Yarn and third Sonia Tajish. Well, and on the men's side, there was a new course record by Sebastian Keeney. Finished fourth in Kona and obviously had enough time to just about get another training block yeah. in and pick himself up at the end of the season. So that was an impressive performance there. Michael Weiss was second and Ivan Rana was third. It's time for caption competition. And now I feel a little bit mean as Mark's not here and he wasn't here last week to defend himself, but we did have this slightly funny picture. And I've chosen my favorite caption, which was from James Hutchinson. And he says, someday I'm going to be an Iron Man, just like Heather. Well, you know, we're both Iron, Iron Men, so we can gloat whilst Mark's not here, a bit yeah. mean of us. Yeah, but Susie, advantage. As you're the guest, you get to choose your favourite. Okay, so I chose mine from Rainer, and his caption was, trying my best to look like Jan Frodano. Um, and then hashtag headband. Hashtag game strong, nice one. Well, Rainer, yo, please send in your details over Facebook to get your free cap. 
And for this week, we have chosen this picture. Now, those of you who um, watched last week, I was joined by Mark Buckingham on the bike. We actually went out and did some videos as well. And he does have quite good bike skills, but it doesn't look like it here. And we were finishing off a video and trying to do a little thumbs up like, and he thought he'd be really clever and do both thumbs. But as you can see, the thumbs didn't quite make it. And a few moments after this, he pretty much almost took me out. Luckily he didn't, but we would love to know any suggestions you've got for captions, do leave them in the comments section below. And now moving on to the GTM Pain Cave, and we've got a great selection that we've picked out for you this week. We're going to start off with Moise Snani, who sends a picture in on Facebook Messenger and very clearly says his son's Hot Walk Blue Kid bike. I think he's quite proud of that one. Yeah. What do you think, Susie? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I think he needs a turbo trainer for the for the kid to, to cycle along next to him, but yeah, there's some pretty cool bikes there. I think your favourite's the kids' bike, isn't I it? I think it is. I like the colour, turquoise. It's pretty, but um, three specialised bikes are pretty impressive. Our next one, Llewellyn Griffiths on Facebook Messenger. And yeah, so I think um, he's got his session there written out ahead of him. Knows what pain he's got coming up. And <laughs> I think um, I think I recognise that chin in the in the video, actually. I think, it might, I think it might be your co-presenter. I think that's a thrill for chin, isn't mm, it? Yeah. Recognise that anywhere. Although, I think, Susie, when we first looked at this, you did notice um, that the carpet might get sweaty. Yeah, it was my OCD came out, but um, <laughs> I think maybe he needs to um, invest, in, invest in a mat. Yeah, well, there you go, Llewellyn. If you are sweating on that, just be careful of your carpet. And that leads us on nicely, actually, to Lisa Law Chicken Dance, who sends another picture in on Facebook Messenger. And there's a very um, good sweat catcher here. Well, I've yeah. not seen one of these before, but... Well, I've actually got one. Um, I was training a lot on the turbo before Kona, um, a fair amount anyway. Yeah. And, you know, you're sweating a lot and that sweat goes right into your crank if you're not careful. Okay. So, um, yeah, I, I, got, I got one to catch the sweat. Cool. Well, also, Lisa Law's got... Um, a mannequin with a mini skirt. Yeah, as you do in every pain cave. <laughs> I think I think I need to get myself one of them. Yeah, would it be a mannequin? Would you dress it like like yourself, or would you put it in a? We've got an Iron Man t-shirt. No, a Prizeman t-shirt. I here. don't know. Maybe maybe I dress it as one of my competitors. Get get a Daniel. That's a that's a, a Lionel. Yeah, and, yeah, that's a Lionel Sanders yeah. technique, isn't it? Have you seen his? Mm. He's got a poster up with um, Patrick Lang. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll have a Daniela mannequin, which I don't know if that's. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't tell Daniela just yet. Yeah. Until you've beaten her, then you can say that's that's the secret to yeah, success. Yeah. Well, we'd love to see more of your pain caves, so do send them in on Facebook and Twitter using hashtag GTM Pain Cave. Well, that's it for this week's show. Susie, thank you so much for coming in and joining us. Thanks for having me on. Well, I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you've enjoyed this week's show, give it a thumbs up, like, and to subscribe to GTN, just click on the globe. And if you want to check out my P5X, click on the link below. And if you want to see our choice of top tech from this year, just click on this video here.